Hey yo, I'm Colby from Sanitarium Productions. We're back again today with another G.I. Joe toy review from the 50th anniversary line. Today we're looking at the Vanishing Act 3 pack. Uh, this is a pretty cool looking set. It includes a new repainted hit and run figure, torpedo, and a Zartan figure. Uh, this is one of the new three packs um, from the 50th anniversary release. Very cool looking set so far. Um, I'm not sure about the uh, hit and run figure. He's got a really nice kind of grayish look to him, but it looks a little weird in the packaging, so we'll kind of see what it looks like when we actually get it out. And um, Other than that, we've got a torpedo figure and a Zartan figure. I'm kind of excited about Zartan. We've not really had a stellar over-the-top Zartan figure yet, so we'll see how well this one does when we get it out of the box. So that's what we're going to do here in just a couple minutes. We're going to unbox this thing, take the figures out, do a quick review of all three of them for you. So here we have the G.I. Joe 50th Anniversary 3-Pack Vanishing Act featuring Hit and Run, Torpedo, and Zartan. Pretty cool looking set. Uh, this was out of the second wave of 3-Packs, I guess. Backside is uh, traditional that we've seen in the past. Again, no file cards. The file cards are inside, so yay. Let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. Pretty straightforward. figures and the nice plastic stuff we got and the uh, background thing that can now go away. Uh, the file cards are the same as we have seen in the past with the rest of the 50th anniversary. You've got two cards per figure and each card has two different languages so let's see where's the English version. Here we go. Pretty cool. Zartan. Master of Disguise. He wants to be a Master of Disguise. And Hit and Run. Cool. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't fool much with the uh, file cards anymore but it's nice that they're included um, I don't know but we'll put them to the side because it doesn't really matter to me what we want to see is the actual figures so go ahead and take all these things out there are a ton of accessories here so uh, we might as well just go ahead and dig in we'll start over here on the uh, right well on my right the figures left is Zartan. Um, before we do that, I'll go ahead and just mention that, whoops, we just had an accessory pop out. Uh, they do have all of the figures kind of rubber banded in, so we're going to take our X-Acto knife and just slice that open, just to make it easier for us to get these things out with. Zartan, and unfortunately these uh, rubber bands are kind of caught in the uh, knee joints of all of these figures, so 
We'll go ahead and pull them off also. The figure stands that come with these are the same as the rest of the 50th anniversary line. They have the nice uh, raised logos for the Cobra or Joe, depending on which faction they're aligned with. And they have a nice paint job on them as well, and then the uh, code name on there. So, always nice. We've got a crossbow here, a very cool looking crossbow. We'll come back to that in a minute. The uh, traditional backpack to store all your crazy face masks in. A little dagger. And three different face masks. We've got the uh, traditional Zartan disguise that's uh, from the vintage line. We've got A Duke disguise. And a Storm Shadow disguise. Very cool. Moving on to the center, we've got Torpedo. Cool looking figure. Figure stand that comes with him. A light machine gun. A torpedo gun. Spear gun. Sorry. His breathing mask, flippers, and we'll guess this backpack is his. It will come out. Cool backpack. Uh, for some reason, this uh, plastic is a lot heavier than what they've used in the past. So, yeah, they put some work into that at least. Uh, then there's another knife here, and I don't know yet if it goes to torpedo or if it'll go to hit and run, but uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. We'll go ahead and uh, take a look at hit and run now. Looks like they put him under even more rubber bands than the other guys. Yeah, he has his arms also rubber banded in. Weird. I guess they really don't want these things to go anywhere in the package, do they? Then his figure stand. Heavy assault rifle, medium assault rifle, depending on how you want to look at it. Combat knife, a small hand pistol, a set of goggles, his helmet. And his backpack. There's everything out of here, so that all becomes more recycling. <clears throat> so, yeah, here is everything that you get in the set. A ton of 
great accessories included. So we'll go ahead and zoom in now and take a look at these figures individually. Up first, we're taking a look at Zartan. Uh, we've already looked at his uh, figure stand, so we'll set it to the side here. He has this really awesome crossbow. And it is a really awesome crossbow. The uh, arrows don't seem to be removable or anything like that, but it is a two-piece design, so you can break it down if you want to. But it is a pretty awesome crossbow nonetheless, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, his little combat knife here. Kind of cool looking. Nice detail work on it. And of course the uh, oh, crazy face masks that he has. Storm Shadow here. The uh, vintage Zartan disguise here. And Duke. And then this crazy backpack. Uh, a lot of good detail work on the backpack itself. Some really weird stuff inside of it. I don't know if y'all can... Uh, see that or not but uh, I don't really know what that's supposed to be some kind of crazy ninja weapons or digital disguisey stuff I guess so uh, still cool um, the face masks let's see how they fit in here in theory they would just uh, stack together And you should be able to get all three of them in here somehow. But it is uh, kind of a tight fit. So, I don't know. We have to turn them sideways. Like so. So if you stack them like that, it fits in there pretty well. Then uh, it's got a hinge on it, so it closes and uh, snaps tight. Makes for a pretty good little disguise kit for Mr. Zartan here. Pretty cool. Let's take a look at the figure now. Uh, the sculpt has a lot of cool details on it. Um, I'm not sure if this has uh, got any new sculpting done or not. I don't have all of the Zartan figures, so I'm not really sure. But just overall, it's a really cool looking figure. Uh, a lot of good detail work here, so I, I kind of like it. Uh, articulation wise, his head has plenty of articulation. It is a little bit limited by his hood. But uh, not too bad. You can still move it around in whichever poses you want. Uh, Articulation-wise, he has the standard joints that we all expect from the G.I. Joe 50th line. So I won't go into too much detail on it. Uh, the joints are a little stiff. But they do move, so... Standard uh, swivel and ball on the elbow, on the uh, shoulder, and the wrist is just a swivel. He's got the ab crunch feature, which is a little bit hampered by his chest piece, but uh, it still does work. Standard leg articulation at the hip, double knees, and of course the uh, rocker and ball on the ankle so overall yes very cool articulation on this figure again a lot of really cool detail work on everything here so uh, on his side he does have a holster for a pistol and it does actually come with a pistol already in there and it fits in there fairly easily and doesn't come out easily if we tap on it so that's always a plus uh, see how well his backpack fits. So most of these figures, uh, any of them that have these chest pieces or web gear or anything like that, 
Uh, you may have to just shift them over a little bit to get the holes to line up. But once we do that, his backpack plugs right in and fits easily. No chance of falling out right there. He can take his uh, crossbow. And it fits in his hand easily as well. No problem there. And then the combat knife fits in his other hand pretty easily as well. Um, there's no sheath for it, unfortunately, but that's really the only complaint I have about this figure. Uh, overall, it's a really excellent sculpt. I actually like it. It's got a lot of subtle detail work in the varying shades of gray on his costume, gray and black. Overall, yeah, very cool. Let's uh, take a look real quick to see how well these face masks work. So let's take the vintage face and get it to come out. And the way these things work is you, they just uh, kind of pop in side of the mask and you just kind of press them in place. And it locks in pretty well. And now nobody will recognize him as Zartan. Except that he still has all the rest of the features of Zartan. So, But it's a cool feature nonetheless. He's always getting into mischief with different uh, masks and things like that in the cartoon series. It is a little hard to get it to come off once you get it in there. At least for people who have large fingers like me. Hold on, there we go. It pops back out and then you just uh, put it back in the case. Close the case back up and he's ready to rock. So yeah, very cool looking Zartan figure. I do like this one quite a bit. Up next we've got Torpedo. Uh, we've had a couple of different versions of Torpedo come out. Uh, it looks like this one pretty much uses mostly all the same parts. Um, we've got a little bit different use of some different legs and feet. And his arms now have some uh, fairly cool looking armor on it. A lot of really good sculpting work done on this figure. Uh, articulation wise, I'm not going to go through all the points. Just check them real quick. He does have pretty much all the articulation we've come to expect uh, with the added feature that his uh, wrists both swivel and move side to side. So that's a cool little feature there. Uh, leg articulation is still wonderful. All the same points of motion that we are expecting out of these things. So. Yes, very cool that that's all in place. So uh, just looking at the rest of him, so looking at the back, he's got a lot of really cool detail work here on his belt. He's got a little extra dagger right here that is non-removable, some other pouches and things like that. On his right side, he has a cool dagger that fits into the sheath. No problem whatsoever. On his other side, he has uh, another holster. Um, so you can either add the other knife here, and it fits in there really easily, really snugly. Won't fall out. Or if you wanted to, we can borrow the little pistol that we included uh, with Hit and Run here. And it also fits in there really easily. So you can either go with uh, two knives or a pistol and a knife. It's up to you. It's one of the great things about these sets is they come with so many accessories. You get to choose which ones you like best. So go ahead and store the knife in there for their time being though. Uh, then looking at this, he's got his uh, traditional harpoon gun. 
and his little submachine gun here that's uh, really cool. A lot of nice detail work on it. Uh, his backpack has a lot of cool detail work on it as well. Some oxygen tanks in there and some other doodads. It fits into his back peg very easily. It looks very cool doing so. Uh, then we have his face mask, which fits over top of his uh, head very easily. Uh, the only drawback is I don't actually see any place to plug up his air pipes. They may fit right here in the top. I'm going to take it back off here for a second. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, there are these two little bitty tiny holes up at the top. And you just take these air hoses and they just plug straight in there. Most of the time. It's a tight fit. There's uh, the one. Uh, the one came out. The one and the other. There we go. Those aren't the best in the world, but uh, they do work. So now we can take and put the uh, pack back on him and then fit his helmet over top of his head. And the hoses stay in place, so uh, that is pretty cool. He also has these uh, two cool flippers, and they are um, the new flippers that we saw with the eels as well. They are kind of articulated, so they will flip up and do stuff and things. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of cool. Then you uh, stick his toe in first, and then uh, they peg in at the bottom of his feet. Usually. They're a little hard to get to go in there. There we go. One on each side. And voila. So the only uh, bad thing about this one that I can see uh, on the uh, eels that we had from the 50th anniversary line, there was a way to include the uh, flippers onto the stand. But on this one, it doesn't look like that's the case, so you can't actually uh, set them on the stand with his flippers intact. Uh, not a big deal, but just something you may want to know ahead of time. Uh, then if we take his assault rifle, stick it in his hand. It's kind of large, so it's kind of hard to get in his hand, but uh, once you do... It stays put, so that's good. Then we take his spear gun and stick in his other arm. And his knife fell out, so we'll stick that back in there. And voila! There is Torpedo with all his weapons. So it's cool that he can hold everything in that one. So pretty awesome. I uh, don't really know that I needed another torpedo figure, but uh, we've got one anyways. And it's not a bad figure. It uh, works really well. So if you already don't have one and need one, this is definitely the one to pick up. The last figure in this pack is Hit and Run. Uh, this is an interesting looking figure here. Uh, it's a nice kind of gray color scheme. And I do kind of like that. Um, however, looking at the face, it's uh, just kind of weird looking. 
Uh, he reminds me of some kind of elf for some reason. I don't know. One of those night elf mohawks or something like that. But uh, it's an interesting design anyways. And the color scheme is uh, pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, that aside, let's go ahead and just look at the figure itself. So, um, again, a lot of cool detail work here on this figure. The uh, red and gray camo pattern here is uh, pretty interesting. It's visually pleasing. So, articulation-wise, the head works like we expect it to work. Uh, same thing with all the joints here. His hand only rotates. It does not... Actually, no, I take that back. His uh, wrist does rock and swivel. So, uh, that's another bonus point for him. So, uh, ab crunch feature is here. It's a little bit hampered by these uh, magazine clips on his jacket, I guess. <laughs> uh... Leg articulation is there, as we expect. Double knees and the all-inclusive ankle joint and rotator. So, very cool looking. Pretty much the same uh, legs as we've seen on a bunch of other figures here. And I must say that these work really well. Um, plus it has all these cool pouches. And he has a holster for a sidearm over here and it includes a removable pistol and the silencer I've learned my lesson that's this little piece that looks like a flashlight is actually a silencer so it uh, will attach to your pistol like so and it can also be removed and then it slips back in its little holster right here as well for nice secure storage uh, so that's a very awesome little etc thing here uh, he also has a sheath on his boot here for his combat knife which is this nice gray one here fits his color scheme pretty well it slides in there and fits in there securely so very nice uh, backpack wise this is a very cool backpack. A lot of real nice detail work. It's got the little shovel and spade thing and a lot of little pouches and stuff. It should fit on his back easily and securely, so that's good. We've got a nice bedroll on top there as well. On his uh, vest up here at the top, he has another holster for the other pistol. This little small gray one here, if I can get a hold of it. There we go. That pistol fits in there very easily. And securely as well, so it's always a plus. His uh, assault rifle. It's a very cool assault rifle, if y'all hadn't seen this before. Fits in his hand. without any problems very cool looking uh, his other accessory is his helmet and it's a nice gray camo pattern to match the rest of his outfit that does kind of fit a little wonky a little bit but uh, you can twist that around to get it to fit right and it looks pretty good he also includes this uh, really cool set of goggles that go on top of his helmet in theory they don't fit very easily but there we go they do fit and they look really cool on there so yeah that's a uh, pretty awesome so yeah there we have hidden run he still looks like an elf for some reason but uh, other than his head uh, it's a very awesome sculpt. Very cool paint job. I kind of, um, I guess this figure's growing on me a little bit. Still not sold on the uh, color of the paint on the, on the head. Night elf mohawk. That's all I can say. But it does look a little bit better with the helmet on, so I'll give them that.
Very cool. And here are all three of the figures side by side for a size comparison. We're going to use our handy dandy beachhead figure from the uh, 25th anniversary line. As you can see, they're all still in relative scale to that line. So these should fit in that line with them without any problems. So no concerns there. Uh, a couple of the figures in the 50th anniversary line have started to get kind of uh, large. Uh, most notably the uh, Leatherneck figure and Destro. Uh, they were starting to top the four and a quarter scale or something like that. But uh, these all seem to be pretty much the same size that we're used to. So, And overall this is a, a really cool pack. Uh, a lot nicer than I thought it was. Um, the Zartan figure is outstanding. The uh, Torpedo figure is okay. And other than the face on Hit and Run, it's a pretty awesome figure as well. So you get two really solid figures and uh, one decent figure. That's it for our review for the G.I. Joe 50th Anniversary 3-Pack featuring Zartan, Torpedo, and Hit and Run. Overall, uh, this is actually a pretty good set. Uh, the Zartan figure, to me, is uh, pretty awesome. It's uh, one of the better Zartans that we've gotten so far. So, uh, for that reason, I would go ahead and recommend this set. Hit and Run uh, is a pretty awesome figure. My only real problem is just the the way his face looks. Uh, I still think he looks like a, some kind of night elf. But, uh, you know, beyond that, it's an awesome figure. Torpedo... By itself, it's a really cool figure, um, but they really don't have much need of another torpedo figure, in my opinion. So uh, that's really the only downside, I guess. But in the pack itself, you get a really awesome Zartan figure, a pretty awesome hit and run, and then a nothing wrong with him torpedo, if that makes sense. So uh, that's pretty much the way it is. So anyways, thanks for watching. We appreciate y'all coming out. Feel free to subscribe to our channel, um, take a look at some of our other videos, post some comments down below, let us know how you think we're doing, and uh, until next time, happy hunting and yo-jo!